Bueno, pues buenos días a todos y bienvenidos a esta, a esta reunión informativa sobre EC. Eh, con nosotros tenemos a Soy Crab, que va, va a hablaros sobre los estudios de allí y, y cómo, se puede, cómo se puede ir allí a, a cursar el, el máster. ¿vale? Así que, uh, uh, welcome and thank you for coming and I, I pass you the, the, the speech. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Hola a todos, soy me llamo Zoe Crab. Um, I'm going to give the rest of the speech in Espan or in uh, English <laughs> because my Espanol is not good enough, unfortunately. So um, I'm Zoe Crab. I'm the recruitment manager at HEC Paris. So should you be pre-selected by your university to apply, um, I will be your contact in the application or uh, process and for any questions you may have about the program. I'm going to present uh, the Master in Management for about 30 minutes, uh, maybe 45, and, um, and then I'll have some time at the end for questions. And at any point, if uh, you want to send me an email, I'm going to give my email address at the end, and you're totally welcome to contact me because I am your contact in the recruitment office. So what is HEC Paris? It's a business school. Um, you can kind of see in the slideshow uh, the different degrees that we offer. Um, what I'm talking about today are our pre-experience programs, the Master in Management. That's for students, as you can see, for um, students who have zero to three years of professional experience. And then we also offer an MBA for students with upwards of th uh, two years of professional experience. And then we have the executive MBA, and that's for working professionals who have 10 plus years of uh, experience and they'd like to get that last certification, the executive MBA. We also offer summer school programs, and those are very interesting. Um, they're two week programs during the summer. And students um, from 18 years old to 35 are welcome. They can uh, get a taste for HEC, dip your feet into HEC, And um, the programs are actually taught by our faculty. So a lot of summer school programs in different universities, they'll have um, their, their programs taught by visiting professors, but our summer school programs are taught by HEC professors. So that's a real added value if you decide to attend the summer school. Then uh, we also have PhD programs. So um, if that's interesting to anyone, um, we, we offer a PhD program. So we're a top-ranked business university. Um, I don't spend very much time during the presentation about the rankings. I think they speak for themselves. I do draw your attention to number three institution worldwide a couple years ago. So that's taking into account many things. It's taking into account um, the faculty, the research facilities, the campus, the student life, all of those things and brought together we were voted as a uh, number three institution in the world so uh, we we're quite proud of that so we have 4,500 students in degree programs of which um, we have 64 percent who are international meaning non-french and within that 150 different nationalities represented as well as our faculty um, and our administration. The number of international uh, non-French is actually reflected as well. There's about three quarters who are international or uh, non-French in our faculty and administration. So that's really at the heart of HEC is the diversity of our student body, the diversity of our staff. We want to have people from all around the world come and contribute their unique perspective um, from their nationality. So um, the next point I draw your attention to is our alumni network. So close to 70,000 alumni around the world in 100 or more countries. Um, so our alumni network, as soon as you step foot on HEC, you have access to that. They can help you um, build your network for your career, build um, the, Just uh, you can help you find internships or full-time positions with that alumni network. It's really a, a close-knit community. And then 130 international partners, which you'll see in a minute a, a few examples of that. But of course, the um, UPM Minas is one of our treasured uh, international partners. 
so the HEC Paris teaching philosophy, um, it's high quality standards with more class hours and fewer students per class. So on average, your classes will be uh, around 50 students and you'll have over 350 hours of in-class hours. You'll always be taught by a professor. Um, we don't have TAs as uh, the main instructor is always going to be a professor. Then there's the perfect balance between theory and practice. So 50% uh, of your professors are uh, faculty, uh, research faculty, and then 50% are going to be practitioners, experts in their respective fields. And that's a real added value that you could be in class uh, half the time doing research with your professor, and then the other half doing live case studies and uh, company projects working um, in the field, so to speak. The inspiring environment, so that's uh, the personal development program is um, our career services. They really take you in hand as soon as you step foot on HEC uh, campus. You can have a CV review, you can have coaching, um, and then there's also uh, job fairs that they organize, networking events, and um, a lot of different companies will go to our career services looking for interns, etc., and you can have access to that. Um, inspiring environment as well as I'll get into a little bit more detail in a minute but the strong campus social life so our master in management so I believe um, with our double degree that you uh, you all are probably in your first year of your master at Minas and um, and then you'll be applying to complete the master in management uh, starting in September 2022 and that program, the Master in Management, I'll go into detail in a minute, but it's a two-year program, often done over the course of three years because students do their first year at HEC, they have an optional gap year, and then they do their second year at HEC. So um, I'll go into detail about that. But first, let's look at the classroom. There, in our Master in Management, our classroom has 250 international students. So um, you can see 56 nationalities represented on average, 40% um, women. So uh, unfortunately, there's a, we'd love to see that go up to 50%, but at all of these engineering schools in Madrid, I haven't had that many women in the classroom, unfortunately. So um, we'd love to see that number go up in future to be a 50%. The average age is 23 for the student in the master in management. And you can see the average GMAT score there, but that's actually um, one of the benefits of applying through the double degree is that you're waived that GMAT requirement. And then um, all academic backgrounds are eligible. So you can see primarily our students are coming from business management or engineering. And then, um, and then smaller proportions of each of the other academic backgrounds. But you could be in the classroom with someone who studied um, business management. You could be in the classroom with someone who studied hard sciences. That's also at the heart of HEC is that diversity of academic background. So it's really to bring students together who have different, um, different academic backgrounds, different perspectives, um, from their studies and that can that's really enriching the master in management for our students. The last point is the former university location of our master in management. As you can see, 70% are coming from Europe and then 30% from elsewhere in the world. So the master in management, this is um, our the, the, an example of what you could be doing in your first year of the program. So it's a generalist phase. You're taking your core courses and your uh, elective courses, and then as well as having consulting projects, live case studies, and, um, and conferences throughout the year. So um, this is a great opportunity for students who are uh, coming as you would be from an engineering background to kind of transition into the business and management uh, education. So uh, you have your core courses and electives, some examples there. And then after that, in order to validate your master in management, you will have to have a certain amount of professional experience. So students have to complete, I believe it's seven and a half months of professional experience. 
So a lot of students take the time to do that during their optional gap year. A lot of students take advantage of this. Um, although some students, I believe, like because you are engineering at UPM, you may have done six month internship included in your bachelor's degree, I believe. So perhaps if, if you want that gap year, you can waive it if you have enough professional experience. Um, it's really up to you. That does give you the time though to sort of decide what uh, specialization you'd like to do in your M2. So here are the different options for the specialization phase. Um, basically, these are the options over on the side there are the options you can do on campus. So strategic management, international finance, marketing, economics. There's really a lot of options at HEC, as well as that we have international double degrees. So um, you could do a, um, a exchange program for your second year if there's a um, exchange program that interests you. Um, I'm not sure that the double degree would be recognized in UPM because you have already a double degree with UPM. So that's something to be discussed with your uh, advisors. But I think there, there is the possibility for students to do at least a semester exchange program. So um, the specialization, um, if you stay at HEC Paris and do one of our specializations, strategic management, international finance, marketing, et cetera, then you have the option to do a certificate. And I'll go into what the certificate is in a minute. But throughout your time, the two to three years you spend as a student, a MIM master in management student at HEC, you have the career services, job market workshops, and career fairs, meetings with alumni, and networking events throughout the year. So that's really an added um, value to your degree is all of those uh, career services, meetings with alumni, networking events. So where do our students go after the Master in Management? As you can see down at the bottom, the post Master in Management jobs by sector. So primarily you can see they're going into consulting financial services and tech, but uh, with smaller proportions going in different, um, different sectors. And 8% of students launch their own company after, after graduation. So that's something we're really excited about is the, the number of students that go off into the world and, and are creating something of their own. Um, so you can see there's other statistics there, but 40% of graduates are working outside their home country. And so you can see over there on the side, um, primarily they're in Europe, France, and the UK, but then with a 20% that are elsewhere in the world. So the certificates, if you choose to do this um, in your second year specialization, I think it may be at extra cost, but um, these are some examples of the companies that have come to HEC Paris to uh, teach the certificates. So the climate and business is rather new, so we don't have an example of a company, but um, this is a great opportunity for, again, networking with a real company and uh, a, a successful company such as um, LVM Ash uh, or CA Société Générale, all of those. So you choose which area interests you. This is an opportunity as well to kind of dip your feet in a subject that uh, you maybe have studied about but you've never experienced um, working with. So you can choose, um, for example, if you choose energy and finance with Société Générale, um, you could be in the classroom, so you'll be networking with a, a company, a real company, um, and as well as networking within HEC. So, um, for example, in your second year, if you choose the international finance specialization, you'll be in class with uh, other international finance students pretty much all the time, learning all your, uh, all your classes for that specialization. But when it comes to the certificate, you could be with the other majors. It's really the students pick which certificate they would like to do. So you could be in the classroom with marketing students, with sustainability and social innovation students. You could be with all different types of majors. So it's a way to um, network as well with your peers. And that's, uh, that's the certificates. So campus and student life. 
These are some pictures of our campus and student life. Up at the top there is uh, one of our newer buildings on campus, the S building, so that you could have classes there. Um, over there on the, the side is the inside of the library. Um, in the middle there is um, an example of a uh, past graduation ceremony, which we haven't had um, in a couple years for obvious reasons. And then over on the side is the student residence hall. So an example of um, where you could be living as an international student. So coming uh, from Spain, you would be guaranteed on-campus accommodation. So um, that's a great benefit to applying from abroad because HEC Paris is not located in Paris Center. It's located between Paris and Versailles, approximately 45 minutes in public transportation to get to Paris. So it's quite far outside the city, but they did that specifically to have this great wooded campus. It's a, it's a beautiful campus surrounded by forests and lakes. And um, they, they moved it from Paris. Um, actually, in the 1960s, it was bef uh, one of the first European campuses to move outside the city because um, they wanted to create closer community of their students to kind of um, have a vivid campus life. And that's, uh, that's been a success. So at the heart of HEC is kind of that student life. We have 130 plus student associations and clubs. And uh, that's a way for you to um, really create links and uh, create a community connections with your fellow students. They can range from humanitarian to professional to sports um, or even cultural. We have uh, the Italian Cooking Club. There's the Energy Conservation Club. There's the um, Women in Business Club. So we have lots of options. And if, you, if you'd like, you can consult our website to see all the different clubs and associations that you could potentially take part in. We're looking for students who are going to, um, to take part in our student life. We want students that are going to be great academically, who are going to go off into the world and do, uh, do great things. But we also want them to create a connection and have that, um, have that vibe and dynamic student life um, because we want them as well to always be HEC students after they graduate. So that's part of the, as well the, the 70,000 alumni. We want students who are going to uh, create the connections with the school and with your peers. So um, if there's not a club that's interesting to you, to you, you, you're welcome to create your own student association and club as well. Um, but the, the reason, so we often say that HEC Paris has a American style campus and I'm an American and I can say that that is exactly uh, true, that there's a student, um, there's really a student school spirit, they're proud to be HEC students and it's, it's really its own um, village. Of, Besides, uh, besides Paris, it's like its own uh, city with itself because you can have everything you need on campus if you're living on campus. Um, but I do say it's an American style campus with a French touch because there is a castle on campus. So where I come from, you don't often have castles on campus. So that's a um, exciting, pos or exciting point. How to apply to HEC Paris. So um, the fact that you're double degree students um, or potentially if you are pre-selected by UPM, um, that's you do have a little bit of a lighter admissions process once you apply to HEC. So the things we're looking for in our candidates are uh, we, we're going to take a holistic approach to the admissions process. We're going to look at your academic excellence. So that's your transcripts, uh, your reference letters, all of those things. And then we're going to look at cross-cultural sensitivity. So um, that can be made evident in the languages that you've learned, or um, if you've been in an international company, if you've worked with people of different nationalities, that can be you traveling abroad. It's really a lot of different things that you can put at the forefront for cross-cultural sensitivity. And then internships or extracurricular activities. So we'll be looking at your CV to see those. 
Then we'll be looking at strong motivation, and that's going to be made evident in your essay questions, the answers to your essay questions, as well as in the interview. So the application process is a four-step process at HEC. So you start with your online application, and the deadline you'll see in a minute, but it's April 20th in 2022 for the, our partner universities. So you start with the online application and um, you upload the supporting documents that you can see listed there, degree certificates, academic transcripts with GPA, one page resume or CV, and I'll give you tips for that in a minute, two online letters of recommendation, and your essay questions. The online re letters of recommendation, one of which must be academic, and then your essay questions, um, I'll tell you this uh, again on the next slide, but I recommend if you are planning to apply to HEC, you can start your application now and really give yourself time to prepare those essay questions. So for example, um, as soon as you know you're pre-selected from UPM to UPC, even though the deadline isn't until April, you can start now your application and start looking at those essay questions and kind of working out your responses, um, spell check, rereading, making sure um, that it's a, a great essay question answer because those are, um, it's a really crucial part of your application. So once you've gathered those documents and you've applied by the deadline on April 20th, then you're going to be um, to the admissibility stage so um, students from our partner universities, such as yourselves, um, if you're pre-selected by UPM, then you're automatically admissible. So that means that we'll be inviting you to an interview. So um, that's a really exciting opportunity is that you don't have to be nervous about the admissibility results because you are guaranteed admissibility. And then um, the interview, I'll give you some tips uh, in a future slide but just a quick little um, taste about what the interviews are like. It's a 20 to 25 minute conversation um, via Zoom. So you'll be in person you're, uh, on Zoom yourself with two to three jury members. And uh, that could be um, staff, HEC professors, it could be uh, admissions professionals, it could be current students, alumni, it really could be a lot of different people, but three maximum. And, um, and it's 20 to 25 minutes. I'll go into that in a, in a minute. Um, and then there's the admission results. So they could be either positive or negative admissions results. Oh, it's not letting me click to the next slide. There we go, okay. Uh, so, admissions deadlines, I've circled there round four because that's the round that we ask our partner um, pre-selected candidates to apply. So, um, the deadline, as you can see, is April 20th. And then, um, as you can also see, admissibility results will be May 12th. And you're automatically going to be getting admissibility, so don't be nervous for May 12th. But uh, then your interview will be taking place after May 12th and, um, and then your results given on June 2nd. So um, I say there, start your application now or when you've been pre-selected by UPM and then submit in round four. You want to select, this is very important, select the track GE, Grande École, MIM, Master in Management, only HEC International Partners, pre-selected candidates, and then you select your school from the list, UPM. So um, the reason that's important is because there are several documents that you're waived because you're coming from our partner university. So um, if you pre-select or if you select that admission track, you'll be waived the um, admission fee as well as other documents. The one page resume or CV. So um, I'll, I'll be quite quick about this because uh, you're welcome to send me your CV via email and I'll uh, give you some um, advice or uh, some tips. But this is just an overview is we'd like it. So one page CV, no longer than one page. Start at the top with education and mention GPA. Then go into professional experience. 
Each of your professional experiences or internships can take up three to four lines maximum. Don't say every single task that you did in that internship. Definitely make it succinct, a highlight, something you learned, something you accomplished. Um, go quite quickly there because um, oftentimes you don't want to spend all that much space on your professional um, experience because you only have a page to fit all of these things. Then your volunteer experiences, same rule, three to four lines maximum. So here it says awards, scholarships, academics, sports, if you have any. Um, and I often tell students it's actually, I put awards slash certificates because a lot of times students have gotten some sort of certification or they've taken a class online with COVID. Um, so you could add that into this section awards or certificates. Then go into your extracurricular activities, clubs, associations, if you have any. Um, it's obvious that in the past two years, students have not been able perhaps to do as many extracurricular activities or clubs or associations because of COVID. So that's being taken into account as well as um, the fact that you have very busy schedules with learning your engineering degrees. So if you haven't had time to do extracurricular activities, you can just add that section if you have it, but uh, don't, uh, don't be stressed. And then IT skills, just list your IT skills. You don't have to give your level. Um, you can just say Microsoft Office, Python, whatever. Um, languages, that's where we'd like you to say your level. So um, English, you could say based on a Cambridge test or whatever, uh, the A1, A2, B1, B2, with each of your languages. And so if you've taken a French course or a French test, you could say B1 and then put in parentheses the test that proves it, DELF test, something like that. Um, and then interests. So a lot of students are quite surprised that I recommend you put an interest category on your CV, but I think that really adds something um, to your CV because if you, um, you are pre-selected by your university, that means you have academic excellence. If you have done an internship, that's quite interesting if you have um, all of these things, but we have a lot of very strong candidates to HEC. It's a very competitive admissions process. So if you put your interests that can really make you seem more of an uh, interesting profile. It can make you more memorable. Um, even if it's nothing to do with business or management, um, a student the other day told me she was in ballet and, and I recommend she puts that in because during the interview we may bring up, oh, so I see you put ballet as an interest. Can you tell me about that? And it's just a way to get the conversation going. It's kind of an icebreaker. So you can just say a couple of your interests outside of school and, and professional because it makes you more of a whole person and we do we're looking at holistically the whole student and then last point keep it clear and concise now interview preparation so i already told you a little bit about the interview it will be taking place online but these are some tips general that you can think about um, when you're whether you're applying to hgc a different school or applying to a job. These are just some, some tips handy. So um, number one, dress professionally. I personally don't think you can overdress for an interview um, unless you show up with a tuxedo and a bow tie. Uh, you really, you can't overdo it. So um, dress professionally, dress like um, you, you mean business. Choose an appropriate environment. So that one is obviously um, only applicable to online interviews, but basically what that means is be aware of what's happening behind you. Because if you're in a uh, cafe in your uh, Zoom call and there's something going on like uh, a fight or a traffic accident, you know, the interviewer is going to be distracted by what's happening behind you and they're not going to be paying attention to the important thing which is yourself so definitely be aware of what's happening behind you in um in the zoom call be punctual so that is something that um via zoom it's uh, hopefully not going to be an issue especially because in spain and france we're in the same time zone but uh it's definitely it's always smart to try to arrive 15 to 20 minutes before your interview 
um, map out the place in advance. I can not tell you how lost I've been in the city Madrid. <laughs> and I wish that I had pre prepared myself to be 20 minutes in advance to each of my presentations, but uh, there you have it. So um, one thing you can do in the Zoom call is actually you can arrive 20 to 15 minutes early and you can be in a welcome room. And this welcome room is actually uh, with the admissions staff and with um, student ambassadors. So you can arrive 15 to 20 minutes early and if you have a question for the student ambassador like, um, oh, so what's your specialization? How did you come to that conclusion? Or whatever you want, whatever you're interested in, you can ask the student ambassador and kind of get out a little bit of your nerves before the interview. And also you can test your camera and um, microphone ahead of time, which is something that's very important. Uh, double check your tech, my next point. So this, we've all done perhaps a million Zooms by this time in our lives. And, um, but I think you can still have a microphone problem or a headphones issue even today. So it's always important to double check your tech, arrive a little bit early, make sure everything's working so that when the interview, the actual time arrives, you can just get sent to your Zoom room and, um, and go and start your interview on the best foot forward on time with everything working correctly. My next point, do your homework. So this is um, applicable to applying to a school or a job. It's um, always do a little bit of research ahead of time before you go. So um, you could look over perhaps the missions of the school. Um, you can look at uh, where it's located in advance and a little bit in an overview of the program. Um, contact current students, contact alumni. Um, really, you can, you can do a lot of things ahead of the interview so that when you come, you, you can show the interviewer that you've done your research, that, you've, um, that you're not just showing up and you don't know what is HEC. You want to show up and you have a little bit of an idea of what it is in advance. Then review your CV and resume ahead of time. So if you decide to put the chess championship that you won when you were five years old, perfectly fine. But um, make sure that you know that that's on your resume. You want to make sure you review everything that you've put on your CV because that's fair game. So if in the interviewer we say, oh, I see you won a chess championship when you were five years old. It was, oh, what? I didn't remember putting that on my CV. It's just, it makes you look much more professional if you know exactly everything that's on your CV and you're ready for questions about anything. The next point, practice sharing about yourself. So this is um, often the first question you may have in an interview or uh, for a school or a job can be, you know, uh, hello, can you tell me a little bit about yourself while you're here? And um, that's just, if you practice in advance, 30 seconds to one minute, then you're, there you have that surefire um, answer that you've got a pitch ready. And that's just a great way to start the interview is a great answer to uh, the question like, hello, uh, who are you? And if you can answer that very intelligibly, you've really started the interview out strong. And that's something that is, if you practice in advance, you can do that very easily. So my next is tuition fees and living expenses. So you can see the tuition fees there. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I'll just turn it off. I'm sorry about that. Maybe if you No, it's not. It was something unrelated. My apologies. Um, tuition fees and living expenses. So you can see here the, the fees for um, HEC Paris. So if you decide not to take the gap year, you just take off that last row, M2 or optional gap year. Um, and then M2 post optional gap year, that's what you take off. So then you pay uh, the, tw the, the first two lines, and if you take the gap year, you pay all three. It's approximately 43,000 euros. Um, and then additionally, uh, we recommend students have budgeted um, 1,000 euros a month to pay for housing, food, health insurance, um, et cetera. 
as well as uh, your hobbies. So think about you know the fees that you see there, but also be, be planning in advance um, about 1,000 euros per month at HEC. My next point, HEC Paris scholarships. So um, you're, these are merit-based scholarships that students are automatically considered for should they be accepted at HEC. So you're automatically considered for the Excellence Scholarship or the um, Women's High Potential Scholarship. So um, basically, within if you've been admitted to HEC, you will be um, notified two weeks after the admission results with um, an answer if you are granted one of these scholarships. If you're not granted, one of the scholarships, then um, after, two weeks after you, and you've received nothing, that means that you haven't been granted a merit-based scholarship. So they can range from 3,000 to 12,000 euros and up to 15,000 for the women's high potential. I'd also like to just take a moment to tell you about the Avenir Scholarship that's done with the, it's a partnership collaboration between HEC Paris and the French Embassy of Spain. So um, you apply separately. So these ones are automatically considered, but you, um, for the Avenir Scholarship, you apply separately to the, um, I believe your Campus France in Spain. And, um, and we award, HEC awards five students the Avenir Scholarship and that's 5,000 euros. So it's a quite interesting scholarship to be, to be thinking about for the Spanish students. So this is, um, that's the end of my uh, presentation. Here's my email address. You can feel free to contact me via email. Um, you may have already received an email from me, uh, but yes, so I'm, I'm, I welcome you to send me an email with your CV and I, would, um, and I would be delighted to review your CV with you or have a personalized consultation. Um, and otherwise, I think um, if, if that's okay with everyone, we'll, we'll do a video by a current student from Minas who wanted to, to come and, uh, virtually and say hi. José Carlos Rodríguez, eh, alumno de la UPM de la ETSIT, como espero que haya muchos de vosotros en esta charla. Y nada, quería contaros un poco lo que ha sido mi experiencia en HT. Eh, así en resumen, creo que es de las mejores decisiones que he tomado como alumno de la UPM, venirme aquí y hacer la doble titulación. Eh, y creo que pues, tanto la gente como las oportunidades profesionales que te abre eh, son increíbles. Os voy a contar un poco más sobre el programa en general en inglés ¿vale? y sobre mi experiencia, pero para cualquier cosa le pido a Sobri que os dé mis datos, así que tenéis tanto mi mail como mi teléfono, así que si queréis escribirme un WhatsApp o lo que sea, eh, hacedlo sin, sin, sin duda. Uh, so the Master's in Management program is a great program uh, for us engineers, I think, uh, especially if you are not sure you want to do a professional career in, in, in engineering. In my case, I did not want to be a telecom engineer, so I wanted something business or finance oriented, which is why I joined. Uh, right away, what uh, struck me the most from the campus is the international ambience, there's also a lot of Spanish people, but a lot of international people from all over the world, from India to France to Germany uh, to China, any part of the world, you name it. Um, and it's a program that is structured in two years, and also in between you can choose to do a gap year where you can gather some professional experience uh, and then decide what you want to do in your final year, which is your specialization. Um, Honestly, the professional opportunities offered by HEC are limitless. It's one of the best business schools all around the world. Uh, number two masters in, in management in the world. Number one masters in finance in the world, which is uh, the specialization I chose to do uh, now during my last year. Um, and for me in particular, uh, I took a gap year uh, in both consulting in London, then went to Madrid and did some um, uh, finance. Uh, and went back to London last summer to JP Morgan, where I'm gonna uh, join next year as a full-time uh, analyst in the investment banking division. So as you can see, there are plenty of opportunities that are offered. In my case, it was more finance oriented, but there are a lot of people also in Amazon, Google, uh, all the greatest companies, you name it. Uh, also people founding startups. 
So honestly, you will not regret the decision. And again, don't hesitate to contact me for any questions you might have, any doubts with other uh, programs from the UPM, from Chicago, to any other universities, because I had the same doubts as you're having today. Uh, so again, uh, feel free to contact me and I'm happy to help. Thank you. ¿Qué tal chicos? Eh, soy José Carlos Rodríguez, eh, alumno de la UPM de la ETSI. I didn't realize he was at the other school, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, there's an example of a UPM student, and uh, there, I, I'm open for questions now, if you have any. So as important as the double degree program, would be graduate as the, like the French uh, Grand Ecole, like the Diploma Grand Ecole? Yes, so um, as from UPM, uh, the only option to you is to do the Grand Deco Master in Management as the double degree. You can, if you'd like, uh, to just apply to one of our um, specialized masters, but you do that separately from the UPM partnership. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So there's no partnership in the specialist masters you were talking about. For example, I'd be more interested in the one of economics and finance rather than the management one. So there's no partnership for that one in particular. Well, the thing is, is um, the partnership with UPM, you don't finish your masters at the UPM, and then you come to us and you do a two-year master in management, but. Within that, you do have to have a specialization for your M2. And so you can choose any of the specialized masters as your specialization. So the economics and finance, uh, is that the one you said? Yes. Yeah, so that one is one of the options that you can choose as a specialization in your second year. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it would be either the, if you want both masters, you would have to finish here your two-year program and then apply separately, um, independently from UPM to HEC for the one-year program, or you do your first year master here and you do the two-year program at HEC. Yeah, maybe I, I could answer a little bit about the second part of the double degree agreement. For finishing the master here, the, the master in, in mines, um, what you have to do is just to defend your master thesis that you have uh, carried out at, at the HEC. So the second year will be fully uh, uh, convalidated uh, with, the, with the two years of, of master there. And then you, you only have to do the, the master thesis defense. Any more questions? Some questions there? Huh? <laughs> well, yeah, so there we have it. I guess uh, feel free to send me an email if any questions pop up from now until when you apply. I look forward to helping you with your CVs or along the interviews. I'll probably be having a webinar later in the year to um, to talk more about the interviews and um, for the UPM and UPC students. And our partner universities. Thank you very <laughs> much, Zoe, for, for coming here to, to the Etsy Minas. And uh, well, we will include this, uh, this uh, meeting, this information meeting. We will uh, upload it in the web, in the website, and maybe also your contact information. Absolutely. For the students that uh, will not be able to come here and, and will be interested also. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, 